be in a different country where things like that don't work and people may have a comment on your food or your accent. Even I've been with them sometimes in a shop, for example, and people will be like, I don't understand you. What are you talking about? And then they would turn to me because I had a British accent and be like, can you translate? And then even that to me, that sounds very rude. Hi, 大家好，我是戴淑贤，这是我的大学朋友。我是 Krishma. Today we're going to be talking about something that we talk about quite a lot, which is about the fact that your family is of Indian culture,、mm -hmm. but your school life and your university life was obviously not. So, because I know you do a lot of traveling, when you introduce yourself to people abroad, would you say that you're British? How would you say that? I don't actually know.、It、depends on the person asking me. I've always found if there's like another Asian person asking me, I just say I'm Indian because I've had a bit of fun. Looks in the past, like if I say I'm English, they look at me a bit odd, and I feel like they expect me to just say I'm Indian. Really? They can see my skin color. So if you have the question, where are you from? You'll say England. Yeah.、But、Sometimes then... I say I'm Indian. When I've said I'm Indian, people, oh yeah, cool. They get it more than me saying I'm British. I'm from England. But then they'll be like, okay, so like where in India? But you haven't even lived in India ever, have no. you? No. But I know where my family are from, so that's where I'm from. So I can、yeah. just say that, like, oh, we're from like North India. So the question. Where are you from? Is usually about like where are your yeah, origin. People are not actually interested in your life. Yeah. Are there any countries you've been to where that's been a particular issue? Because I can imagine, issue, obviously,、meaning. if you go to like Germany, I think people can get that concept pretty、yeah. easily. I guess Asian countries, Africa as well. They seem to not understand that I'm from two places, but wasn't born in the. Place that I say that I'm from. So, would you still feel like you have two kind of identities, like the Indian side and also the English side? Yeah, I think culturally, a lot of people think that you can't be from two places, which is also the big cultural dilemma when you're growing up. Like, what am I? Because you have to belong to one or the other. You can't be both. Which is, I think, also why my parents were scared about sending me off to uni because I would lose my Indian culture and then become British. Even though they've lived in this country for so many years, they've never fully adopted the British culture. They are just Indian, and that's it. So they feel like there wouldn't be room for you to have both. Yeah. Do you feel like you do have both now? Yeah. Do you feel like one has replaced the other? I don't think so, but I think that's taken a lot of years. Like even when I came to uni, I struggled a lot with what am I? I guess you could say I preferred the British way of living better than the Indian way of living because what I've seen at home is a lot of pressure to be a certain way, to do certain things. For example, like culturally, we don't really like go out and drink a lot. So yeah, like differences in that kind of way of life. I'm quite an outgoing person, and it was just within my nature. Nature, to meet new people and go out, so that was quite difficult for me to do because I knew my family wouldn't agree with that. Yeah, because I know you had to hide a lot of things. Yeah, them, didn't you? yeah, like going out, even just drinking alcohol, drinking, staying out late at night, even after nine o'clock would be classed as late. Yeah, and maybe dating as well. Especially whilst you're trying to get an education, they would just say like you have to focus on your studies, not being with a boy, which is also so weird because once you hit a certain age, they go suddenly from saying you're not allowed to speak to boys or date to then asking, so when you're getting married. Are you with、yeah. someone? So it's like, how do you expect me to find someone if you've always said speaking to a guy is bad? Yeah. If you meet like a young Asian, they'll always try and hide、mm. that they're speaking to boys. Asian communities talk to each other a lot as well. The community is very tight, so they find out information from talking to each other. So the same would work like in London. There's like Asian people that you've literally never met in your life, but might know something about you, and <laughs> go and tell the other aunt down the street,、oh, and then the、right. other aunt, and it somehow gets back to your mum. So word would get around. So you'd always、yeah. try and like if you're with a boy, it would look bad because、yeah. somebody would make a comment like, "Oh my god, they're not even married. They're like dating. It looks so bad." And then word gets around to your parents, and then they would be like, "What are you doing? You're bringing shame on us." But it's not even that new of a concept, is it? No. Like this has been happening for quite a few generations.、Now. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have heard of this term coconut. When you call an Asian person a coconut, it means they're brown on the outside but white on the inside. Oh yeah. So it just means like you're acting like a white person. I think when Asian people say it to other Asians, it's meant as a joke, but it can be quite triggering because again, what do you mean I'm acting like a white person but I'm brown? Again, that just means that you can't be two cultures. It's just emphasizing that we have cultural differences. Yeah. What exactly so, is it that makes someone a coconut? Like, so when it's been Referred to me, it's like, oh, you like going out, you like drinking, you're an extrovert. So you're not supposed to be extrovert. Not supposed to be. Yeah. Like... Indian girls are seem to be timid and shy and dress a certain way. It's mainly personality type,、right. independence, extrovert.、Um, maybe the foods that you like. Indian people should just eat curries all the time. I guess the personality one kind of surprises me. So that suggests that people are almost like pretending because it can't be that everyone has the same personality if they're from a culture. Yeah. So maybe there's a sense of like people mold. 
molding their personality to mm -hmm. fit in with to what is the norm. In. I don't think I ever had to change my personality. That is always who I was. Yeah, that's why I feel like you are just like that. But I think just when you think of an Indian girl, you might think they're shy, reserved. So yeah, being sporty can also be part of being a coconut. Liking to travel? Yeah. You're a classic coconut, aren't you? Yeah, very <laughs> coconut actually. <laughs> Indian people don't really travel a lot, just I guess because it's not seen as important in Indian culture. You should try and get an education first and earn lots of money, and then you can do these things. Traveling's like a bonus, like a yeah. luxury. Yeah. And I guess it's not very common to get someone who's the opposite of a coconut, like a white chocolate raisin. Well, if we talk about personality types, I'd just say if you were really timid, like <laughs> what would would make you Indian. I am very timid. <laughs> <laughs> but it can't just be being timid. There's obviously more to it. Maybe if you started liking just Indian food, being vegetarian. Presumably like having been influenced yeah. by Indian culture. I always feel really appealed by Indian culture. I feel like it seems really colourful and yeah. friendly. Oh yeah, there's a lot a of good of things. Yeah, big sense of community. Great food. Just like lots going on, like vibrant. And that is also part of it, but then when it concerns certain controversial topics like marriage, and kids and education vibrancy doesn't exist anymore and it becomes very strict mm. they double standards like the culture is actually very welcoming even strangers into your home and making sure they're fed before they leave showing other people our own culture like if you went to India they would love it they'd love to show you their culture and like how they pray and like what they eat and things like that but when it comes to accepting another culture into their household as a marriage then it's like a big no so that's double standards it almost seems like maybe because of the worry of what other people will think mm. more so than people themselves actually yeah caring. so I think with my parents they care more about what other people might say about me being with somebody that isn't Indian so they care a lot about other people's opinions and what it looks like me being with a non-Indian even my parents have experienced coming to a new country and not being accepted into the British culture you know comments about the way the food smells when they cook down the street mm. I guess it's kind of microaggression and then afraid like how will somebody accept my daughter I guess they're also embarrassed like what will people say if they want to go and pray at a temple. People always make comments about that. I guess when people about praying. Yeah, I guess when sometimes people ask, like, oh, so you pray, you go to a temple. It's not in an inquisitive way, it's just in a very judgmental way. I mean, is this just like when you grow people. up kind of thing? Yeah. So like when they've grown up, they didn't go out and drink and behave in a very extroverted kind of way. They would play games on the street and I think life was very simple for them. So then to now be in a different country where things like that don't work and people may have a comment on your food or your accent. Even I've been with them sometimes in a shop for example and people will be like I don't understand you what are you talking about and then they would turn to me because I had a British accent and be like can you translate and then even that to me that sounds very rude so yeah I guess maybe they're afraid of how yeah. people perceive them if their own daughter is married into a different culture like will the wedding be the same weddings are a huge deal in Indian culture bringing together two whole families like will they be allowed if it was a British family then like they won't know the customs and you don't behave the same way as Indian people do at a wedding I don't know Indian weddings are very like loud, a lot of dancing. If it's not something like English people are used to, they probably won't get involved with that. It's mm -hmm. not the same vibes, I guess. But I've also like seen people be racist to my parents, say things about their accent. Do you think the colonial history ever occurs? Is it something that your parents often think about? I don't know, because it's really odd. Like Indian people, they still love British culture. One example that comes to my mind is in India, even for me growing up, it's very important for you to look white, look fair in skin color. So even in India to this day, they have skin lightening creams to make yourself look fair. If you look at any of the Bollywood actresses, you're never going to see someone my colour on the screen because that's not beautiful. Being beautiful is being fair skinned and that comes from the past. Because you're ruled by British people, you want to look like a white person does. So if you want to look like that, why don't you want to act like them? Do you think that shows that there's a love of British culture or almost like a need to... Maybe a need to be accepted somehow. Yeah, I guess it's interesting to think that it's not just our lifetime that's having an effect it's like subconsciously I feel like there are remnants in like families and like yeah. the stories that go around and stuff from what's happened years and years and yeah, years ago yeah and then that just becomes ingrained into you I mean, it's not something you think it's almost about. like not conscious is it yeah have you been dating anyone else and how's that
I am dating someone right now who is not Indian, but through like before in the past, I've been on dates with many like white guys. Indians don't actually make up a big population, so it's actually quite hard to meet other Indian people. Yeah, I can imagine. Like when you're on a dating app, for example, you're not really gonna swipe across lots of Indian people. With my particular hobbies, I meet a lot of Indian people, um, and it's also not very important to me to have to find an Indian person, so I didn't go looking for it. So I'd come across a lot of white guys, and I've been on like dates with them. It doesn't happen anymore, but so when we were at uni, when was that 2011? 11, yeah. yeah, so from 2011 for four years on, going on dates back then was interesting. So I'd get a lot of odd comments like, oh, you're not what I was expecting. Oh, you look pretty for an Indian girl. But like, they can see your profile, right? So the oh, reverse sorry, of catfishing. Yeah. Or you're different to what I expect an Indian person to be like. So what your parents like, are they really strict? People are just Indian? fascinated by the fact yeah, that you're yeah. Indian. Yeah. Would you feel like it's a bit fetishized? Yeah, but also like, what do you mean? I'm not what you're expecting from an Indian person. Yeah, what, what exactly? do you expect from an Indian person? Did to someone mean? actually say that? To yeah, you? yeah. Many people. I don't know what to say. I can resonate a lot with Bender Like Beckham. Mm -hmm. It's one of my all time favorite films. Yeah. It's actually so accurate. <laughs> it's hilariously accurate when like the aunts and mums are shouting at her for like wearing shorts, like showing her body off to boys. She's literally in shorts that are cut up to her knees. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a boy. <laughs> That's a yeah. really good film. Everyone really should good. watch that if you, you haven't seen Bend it. it Like Beckham. It's a good representation of Indian culture, I think, like on the general, yeah. It's quite accurate. So in that case, if someone's asking are your parents really strict, maybe that is likely to be true? I think it's a huge generalization. I don't think it's something somebody of non-Asian culture should be saying. Not all Asians just are strict, assume it's just cultural. Like, please don't go out and show off your body. It also comes from like a safety perspective as well. And just culturally in India, like people don't dress like that. Um, so it's just what they're used to. Someone told me that on one of the dating apps, they went on a date with a Chinese person. And then after that, the app kept showing them only Chinese people. Really? So that means that someone must have programmed it to actually do that, to recognize someone's race. Yeah, it's like when you're on Instagram, you see an advert for a certain type of clothing, then the algorithm notes that that's what you like. So then they'll give you another advert to trigger you, like, are you gonna click yeah. on it again? And if you don't, then maybe it was just like, you yeah. clicked on it. If you do, then there's a pattern. So I think like the algorithm recognizes a pattern. You went on a date with a Chinese person, so that must mean you love Chinese people. It's not the values that you like or the actual person. I do always find it a bit weird when people just have a type. You don't know me at all, but you've assumed. You've assumed that because I have brown hair and blue eyes that I'm gonna be a good person or we're gonna get on. I think if someone said, oh, you're really my type, I'd be like, you're instantly not my type. Yeah, just by saying I'm your type, you're not my type. <laughs> yeah, bye. <laughs> so thank you for this chat. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.